Well, Al Smith is the editor of three best-selling books available from Sophia Institute Press. Uh, and his most recent one, Archbishop Sheen's Book of Sacraments, a Fulton Sheen anthology. Looking forward to talk with him, talking with Al uh, about that. He's a husband, father, grandfather, a man of trade, and a business owner. He served the church for 15 years as a Catholic evangelist, radio host, writer, internet broadcaster, and retreat director. He is the founder and director of the Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen Mission Society of Canada and has served in the board of directors of the Archbishop Fulton John Sheen Foundation in Peoria, Illinois, which promotes the cause of Fulton J. Sheen's canonization process. He's the creator of the website Bishop Sheen Today, which features the life and works of the venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. And as I said, his most recent book that he's edited, Archbishop Sheen's Book of Sacraments, a Fulton Sheen anthology, is our topic today. And we want to welcome to the program Al Smith. Welcome, Al. Uh, Jim and Cheryl, thanks Hi. for having me on today. Well, great to have you. All things Sheen, apparently. I was just thinking that same thing all around Fulton J. Sheen. So it's certainly something very close to your heart. You're on a mission there. Yes. And and I guess I, I thank my parents for naming me Al Smith because it's a very famous uh, New York name, I think, and yeah. um, at least an American name, and the history of Al Smith running for president. So yeah. uh, he was a good Catholic, I'm told. So, yes, and the uh, dinner in his honor, the dinner that bears his name every year when they bring try to try to bring politicians together. <laughs> so, yeah. Not an easy task. But, you know, of course, yeah. I don't know if you're aware, Al, if uh, you were told, that, but our radio station, of course, our, our spiritual patron is Fulton Sheen, and... Um, uh, our call letters, WFJS, honor that with full, uh, for Fulton J. Sheen. Uh, two of our stations have bear those call letters. So a great way to start our uh, new season here together, uh, talking about the good Archbishop. Before we move on to the, the book, though, I, I would imagine you might have uh, some kind of insight into the cause and, and where it is at this point. Yes, uh, I always say to people, uh, good news will come in the future. I, you know, I think people who have followed the cause uh, have, have known it's a bit of a roller coaster ride, and I've been blessed to sit on the board of directors, and of course have fond memories of Father Andrew Apostoli, uh, mm-hmm. who of course is a was our postulate, our vice postulator for a number of years, right. and uh, again he always encouraged us to pray even during the tough times, and so uh, we'd like to say that even though the cause was postponed. Uh, we, we really emphasize that word. It's postponed. It wasn't canceled. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just a matter of uh, researching a few more things. And, uh, of course, we keep in contact with the Vatican, and we keep uh, asking for the new date, which will be coming. So uh, I always say the date will be set. It's just that Rome moves very slow. Uh, anyone, uh, we've been spoiled over the years with St. John Paul II, and uh, Mother Teresa, we seem to canonize our saints quickly these days, mm-hmm. uh, but some saints take a little bit longer. And in this case, Fulton Sheen uh, fits the bill there. It may be a few, uh, a few more months or even maybe a year or so, but uh, mm-hmm. hopefully we'll get a new date from the Vatican uh, in the near future. Now, when you say new date, Al, you're talking about just starting the, 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 pr- the process again or a beatification? Uh, the beatification oh, mass. Okay, so, wonderful. Uh, again, we try to say to people, remember the miracle was approved uh, by, of course, uh, a panel of seven doctors at the Vatican for the cause of the saints, and they recommended to the Holy Father that uh, they appro- that he approve the miracle officially, and he did, and then, of course, instructed uh, us to set a date for the beatification mass, and so uh, it was that date that was postponed. So you can never take away the miracle. Mm-hmm. You can never take away the good works of Fulton Sheen, his writings, his, um, you know, just the testimonies that people have shared about his life and his legacy. So uh, I always say uh, all the good stuff has been done. Uh, now we just wait for the beatification mass to be celebrated once again. So uh, once that date is set, we'll have the mass and he'll be officially I declare blessed. So, um, again, maybe that makes sense to you. No, absolutely. And, uh, that, yes. and, and that will be in Peoria, right? The beatification? Well, you never know. I think oh. there was um, it was scheduled you know, for Peoria originally. Of, of the, po- you know, the, the politics of the church is that mm-hmm. there was many people that wanted a bigger venue. Mm-hmm. They wanted kind of like a, a soldier field, a big stadium that 
could fit 100,000 mm. people in it. And um, I think when they announced that it was at St. Mary's Cathedral in Peoria, they thought it only fits 1,000 people. That, yeah. What? What? You know, so, yeah. um, you know, there's always the talk about venues and things. So uh, let's just get with uh, a new date first. Yeah, there you go. And right. then we can decide <laughs> on a venue. That's so, right. In fact, I remember, I remember our, we knew Father Andrew very, very well. He helped us in our work here getting the apostolate started, but he would always say, you know, the one they would say, if you want to uh, become a saint quickly, don't do a lot of writing because <laughs> they have to go through all the, <laughs> all the materials. But anyway, so speaking of writing, uh, you have edited this brand new uh, book for uh, Sophia Institute Press, Archbishop Sheen's Book of Sacraments, um, and it's combined two books, hasn't it? Right, yeah. Uh, what uh, I've been blessed is that I, I have had the privilege of reading almost all of 66, all of Fulton Sheen's 66 books, and I, I knew that he had a great um, a love for the sacrament and catechesis. Um, he, of course, had his convert classes that he brought so many people into the church, and he was always teaching the faith. And, uh, and many people have even read his Sheen Catechism, which are 50 beautiful lessons. But he wrote about, uh, again, marriage in 1951, when he penned the book, Three to Get Married. And uh, uh, my parents talk about reading that book for their pre-marriage course, and uh, they were married in 1957. And uh, so many others have read this book over the years. But uh, he wrote about marriage in 51 with that beautiful book. And he wrote about the sacraments in 1962 because he sensed that, um, you know, people need, uh, let's say, good maps. Um, we kind of lose our way. And, um, you know, when you ask most Catholics if they, what they could tell you about the sacraments, uh, they may be able to name some of them, mm -hmm. but do they really know what they are? And so Fulton Sheen took uh, his pen and, of course, um, put together this beautiful uh, book that um, I think just uh, enhances uh, hopefully your love for the sacraments, that you start to realize that we need the sacraments in the spiritual journey. And so, again, he wanted to bring souls to Christ. And I think of a, a famous line he wrote back in 1949 in the book Peace of Soul. He said, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. And, you know, that is one of my favorite Sheen quotes, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. And so we wanted all souls to be saved, and uh, what better way to save us than to um, be blessed by the sacraments and to receive the graces contained in them. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, um, Al, that these sacraments will bring us back to Christ, and isn't it full circle? Isn't it Christ himself instituting each sacrament? I feel like that might be a point where some people, again, could probably name some of them, but do they imagine, oh, well, the, the church says we need to get confirmed or that the church made up a rule that we have to have penance before our first Eucharist. Haven't all these sacraments been instituted by Christ himself? Yes, and, you know, and this is when you read through the scriptures, you'll see these moments and again, Christ instituted all seven sacraments. Uh, you know, baptism was associated with his death. And, uh, you know, the scripture passage from Luke when he says, there is the baptism I must need to be baptized with, and how impatient I am for its accomplishment. And, of course, those beautiful words to Nicodemus when he said to him, you know, you need to be... <laughs> baptized in water and the spirit and um, again he used very strong language with Nicodemus and um, you know so it's this idea of Christ instituting not only baptism but you think of confirmation and how you know our Lord began his life in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary overshadowed by the Holy Spirit and of course uh, at the River Jordan uh, the descent of the Holy Spirit upon him. And so, uh, again, you just see the connection as you read through the scriptures, how Christ, uh, you know, each and every one of the sacraments he instituted. Of course, the Eucharist on Holy Thursday, Thursday and the priesthood. Um, of course, the sacrament of penance, he equipped the apostles when he said those sins that you, uh, you know, forgive are forgiven, or that you retain are retained, and of course the great power to absolve sins that were given. And of course his commission to anoint the sick, uh, it, you know, asking people to lay hands and pray over, anoint them with oil. 
uh, of course, the priesthood that was instituted by him uh, again on Holy Thursday. And of course, matrimony, he began his uh, mission at a wedding feast in Cana. So uh, again, uh, you will see the connections of how Christ instituted every sacrament and of course, uh, the power that's attached to those sacraments. Mm -hmm. We're talking with Al Smith, uh, who's put together an anthology, Archbishop Sheen's Book of Sacraments, and it combines two books, These Are the Sacraments and Three to Get Married. It's published by Sophia Institute Press, and their website is sophiainstitute.com. Uh, Three to Get Married, Al, you know, as I was reading through this, and I have to be honest with you, I, I, I had never read it. I'm going to take this home and read it now, though, because I, was, I just began the first chapter. Um, this being written in the 1950s was... It's almost as if, as I'm reading it now, that it was very, very contemporary, written t in today's language. Was this controversial when he wrote this in, in any way? Do you know? Well, I, I, I think, well, you know, I, think, I always say the church has always been controversial mm. uh, because I think it, it uh, demands uh, something from us. And, um, you know, I think when Sheen penned Three to Get Married, I think a lot of people, you know, are saying, do I really need God? I just want to be civilly married. I just, um, I'm attracted to this person. So uh, why do we need to have a church wedding? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but Fulton Sheen in these pages truly explains that it's three to get married, uh, that you don't want to uh, embark on this very special journey uh, without God's help. And uh, he really explains so well in these pages how uh, couples, when they bring the Lord into the relationship, uh, they're strengthened, they're protected, the graces that they need as it's difficult. I mean, uh, many of the listeners have been married for 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 years, uh, and they know it's with God's help. So that whole concept of three to get married uh, sometimes is difficult for people to embrace, but uh, you start to realize, yep, you, we need all the help we can get. Mm. And you mentioned your parents read it. I, I think it's a I, I'm, I'm assuming that maybe that has waned a little bit. It would be an, an excellent uh, resource for married uh, or engaged couples today entering into marriage, and even married couples, as I for that fact. Right. I'm, I mean, Fulton Sheen um, doesn't mince any words. You no. know, he, he. I like to say there's four, um, you know, sections to the book, or or four components, and you know, he begins off with talking about sex, and of course, everybody, uh, you mentioned the word sex, and then you got everybody's attention, but right. uh, he especially wants, in the fifties, supposed <laughs> to say, you know, don't base your marriage just on sex, because right. if the sex disappears. Uh, then sometimes the marriage dissolves, and we see that all the time. And so uh, he gives, uh, again, that warning uh, very, very early and often in the book. And I think the first six chapters talks about, you know, uh, the difference between love and sex, uh, what love is, the tensions of love, um, you know, all of these things. Uh, and in, class, in fact, the chapter, it takes three to make love. So, uh, again, he warns us. But, you know, he reveals to us that, you know, marriage is a mystery. And especially when you bring God into the relationship. And he unpackages it so beautifully, the mystery of motherhood, uh, the mystery of fatherhood, um, the joys of paternity, the role of children. And uh, you see that it's a mission, that marriage becomes a mission, uh, where each person lays down their life for one another. And, of course, they build something together and have children together. So, uh, again, a great work uh, that... Um, uh, young couples can, if they learn it early, they can practice it often and have no regrets. Um, and again, that's why I think it's used so much in pre-marriage. It's kind of saying, here's a roadmap for you, young couple. Hopefully you'll look at this map and it will help you if you get a little bit lost. And so uh, Fulton Sheen has uh, blessed many marriages over the years. And uh, again, there's so much in that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I make a little note. It, it teaches, I'd like to say, um, couples the, you know, I, and it's, it's difficult sometimes that marriage is sometimes um, one of the partners will pass away. And so uh, we always see these stories of the widows and the widowers. But if you truly keep that concept of three to get married, once one leaves, there's still one behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the widow or widower will have Christ uh, to keep them company. So, again, you can even see, even in death, uh, again, there's a blessing in this book, these uh, hidden treasures 
uh, and these life lessons. So uh, we like to call them spiritual strategies that you can use in marriage. But uh, again, there's 21 chapters in this book, and every one of them is excellent. And above and beyond the tutorial for the newly engaged or, or the newly married, it, it takes you right to life's end, as you say. But would you say, Al, that that's the biggest difference between Christian and non-Christian marriages? I mean, my first idea is you get married in the church. You know, it's it's a sacrament. It's really blessed by God, and you want to keep God in the equation. And then the non-Christian, well, you go to the beach or you go to the park gazebo and you know, that's what I think. Well, there's a big difference right there. Right. I think, you know, maybe the non-Christian marriage thinks more that love will keep us together. Mm. Uh, but yet in the Christian marriage, we think God will keep us together. You know, mm-hmm. it's kind mm-hmm. of like God is what unites us. But I think it goes back to graces and blessings. It's, um, you know, again, marriage is a sacrament, and it has sacramental grace. And, you know, we renew our wedding vows. We uh, renew our promises. We ask God to pour out his grace upon our marriages. And so, again, it's this idea of we need these graces on the spiritual journey. And, um, again, I think of how many couples are saying, I'm here to help my spouse get to heaven and vice versa. Mm. And with God's help, with this grace, we can do it. So, again, it's that idea of sacramental grace and how God wants to get us to heaven. He wants us to remain his friend. And uh, again, this is what we try to do in marriage is keep Christ uh, in our relationship as our best friend. Yes, the spouse are usually best friends to each other, uh, but we need to keep renewing our friendship with Christ and the grace of that sacrament will help. So uh, we all want to get to heaven and uh, marriage is a great instrument to help people get to heaven. And uh, I'm sure there's many crosses in every marriage. And of course, Christ had to go through the cross to uh, attain heaven for us. So again, there's so much there. Well, so much in in this anthology, Al. Friends, we've been talking with Al Smith. Uh, He is an editor at Sophia Institute Press and his uh, latest anthology, Archbishop Sheen's Book of Sacraments. And uh, again, you can check out the website, sophiainstitute.com. Again, the book called Book of Archbishop Sheen's Book of Sacraments, uh, and the editor of the anthology is our guest, Al Smith. Al, thank you so much for joining us today and for uh, writing the book, and we'd love to have you back on again and talk more things Sheen, because there's a lot to talk about, especially as we get closer to an eventual beatification and canonization. Yes. 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 Again, thank you for having me, and I'll leave with these great words of Fulton Sheen. Unless souls are saved, nothing is saved, so let's go out and save some souls, including our own. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Thank you, Al. God bless you. Thank you.